This video was brought to you by our new Investor Finder. Get weekly investor matches in your industry, your company stage, and your location delivered to your email for free. Sign up with the link in the description. When you speak to early stage founders, they often don't understand how they can either determine a reasonable valuation for their friends and family seed or series A round, or judge if an offer they receive is fair and reasonable. There are a lot of moving parts to valuation and things vary across rounds. So let's get into the details and also cover what typical numbers look like for these types of rounds. I'll talk about valuation issues in the order things come up. So we'll talk about valuation and other factors at play during a friends and family, angel seed, and series A round. As you go further in the capital stack, and as investors tend to be more professional, valuation and deal terms can and do change. And I'll make sure to point out the differences and pros and cons for both founders and investors. Typically, friends and family investors are writing checks of $10,000 to $200,000. Often, they're family members or close personal connections who feel an attachment or affection to the founders and or the problem the startup wants to solve. The normal valuations you'll see at the friends and family stage are about a half a million to a million dollars. Typically, the range is pretty tight and the valuation is low. The reason the valuation is so low is that the risk is enormous. Many people know that over 50% of startups fail, so this is an extremely high-risk investment. Sometimes you'll hear these rounds termed triple F rounds, friends, family, and fools. While you may have a great idea, the common expression you'll hear is that ideas are a dime a dozen and it's all about execution. You very well could have a great idea, but that's just the beginning and it's the execution that's the hardest part. Founders usually think their idea is the next big thing and there's little chance of failure, but this just isn't the reality and most investors know that, even friends and family. When friends and family investors put money into your startup, it could be structured as a convertible note, which converts to equity at a later stage, or could be done as equity. By using a convertible note, you can delay the valuation discussion about what the company is actually worth. Again, a typical valuation at the friends and family idea stage is around a half a million to a million dollars, and often money is raised as a convertible note or safe. I'll get into convertible notes and safes in more detail in a bit, as well as their interplay with valuation. So after you've raised your friends and family round, you'll typically raise your angel or seed round. Angel investors usually write checks ranging from about $50,000 all the way up to $2 million. But more typically, the check size will be somewhere between $50,000 and $200,000 with some variation higher or lower. Often angel investors don't have a personal or family connection to the founders, but they may have an attachment to the problem being solved or have worked in the domain. Valuations you'll see at this stage are typically between $1 million and $3 million, and that's usually for 10 to 20% of the company. Again, like a friends and family round, oftentimes this is a convertible note or safe type structure that converts at a later round, a later, larger equity round that triggers a qualified financing or QF when you hit a funds raised threshold. I've now mentioned convertible notes and safes several times, so let's get into those as they have a very strong interplay with valuation. You're about to see that valuation does not live in a vacuum, a point I'm going to come back to several times. A convertible note or convertible debt is capital that begins as debt and converts into equity upon a next qualified financing round at whichever is less the discount rate or the note's cap. Discount rate and cap are super important terms to make sure you understand. Convertible note investors are offered a lower price via discount rate to the next round than other investors. This is when the convertible note investors' funds turn into equity at the next financing round. The most common discount rate you see is 20%. This discount compensates investors who came in earlier in the company's life for the highly increased amount of risk they're taking on. We then have the valuation cap, which puts a maximum not to exceed valuation on the company for the next equity round. Valuation caps offer dilution protection to an investor. The lower the cap, the better the deal an investor gets. For the investor, this prevents a runaway valuation where in the very early stage convertible note, they took extremely high risk and they want to make sure that they can convert into a meaningful portion of equity in the next equity round. There are other important terms to understand about convertible notes, but cap and discount rate are the most important ones. When dealing with convertible notes, and taking that back to the subject of this video, 
oftentimes that cap we've been talking about is a tell on valuation. If a startup says they're raising a seed round of $1 million via convertible note with a $10 million cap, they're implying a valuation of about $10 million. That's a not to exceed number, but is definitely a tell. And the higher that number goes, the less interesting it is to an early stage investor. So keep that in mind. To drive that point home, this is why many early stage investors won't invest in uncapped notes, because they have no idea what that valuation could be in the next round and if they're gonna get diluted to almost nothing. There's one other very important and more flexible structure to talk about, and that's a safe or simple agreement for future equity. This is a convertible security, not a convertible note. A safe convertible security has no interest rate, no maturity date, and no repayment requirement. Safes are more founder friendly. Since it's not debt, if the company would go under, the funds are not owed to investors. And similar to convertible notes, safes have discount rates and caps. So you can still defer the full valuation discussion. So now let's think about the interplay of convertible notes and safes and the topic of this video, valuation. Think about this. If you received a term sheet for $1 million convertible note with a $5 million cap, and then we're lucky enough to get another term sheet from another investor for a safe, so convertible security, not a note or a loan, with a $5 million or maybe even $4 million valuation cap, which offer would you take? If they were the same cap and all things being equal, you would want the safe since it's safer for you, no pun intended. But if the valuation cap were a little bit lower on the safe, say four and a half million dollars, you may still wanna consider the safe. So if things go sideways, there is no debt liability. Valuation does not live in a vacuum. Before we go on, let me share a few more things you should seriously consider as you think about valuation for your startup. For example, what happens with your employee stock option pool? Does it come before or after the financing comes in? So do just you, the founders, only get diluted when the stock option pool is replenished? Or does the stock option pool get replenished after the funds come in so everyone gets diluted? This has an impact on what your effective valuation will be. What other things are at play that are tied closely to valuation but are not directly called valuation? How about what additional rights or restrictions is the investor putting on the startup? For example, if your startup wants to write a check or sign a contract over $20,000, maybe the investor has to sign off on that. You're giving the investor much more day-to-day -day control over your startup. You thought you were running the show, but maybe not so based on other terms that are baked into the agreement. Another big factor in deal terms to think about, liquidation preferences. For example, is the investor asking for a 2X liquidation preference, meaning, if there's an exit, the investor gets back two times the money they put in before anyone else gets their money back. By the way, the typical liquidation preference you should be looking for is a 1x liquidation preference. So you might get an offer or term sheet with a slightly lower valuation, but with more favorable terms regarding the employee stock option pool, liquidation preferences, and other rights. So the slightly lower valuation may be a better overall deal for the founders and the startup. The last big issue I wanna point out that we've seen bite founders in the ass and caught them off guard, founder vesting. Let's say you and your co-founder own 100% of the company. You're about to raise a seed round and investors are going to write a check for $1 million. Investors wanna make sure you're going to stay around, so they're going to ask you to vest into the equity of your own company. Otherwise, they could write you a check for a million dollars, one of you walks out the door and now owns a large percentage of the company that they're no longer working for. Thanks, gents, for the cash and equity. Let me know how it all turns out. Not something an investor ever wants to let happen. What's typical? Investors will ask you to vest over a three to four year period into the company. Some investors may say you get a four year vest, but you also get a 25% credit for the time you've already put in, for time served. Like I've said many times before, the terms and negotiations can get fairly complex when working on deals like this. Bring your A team and your A game. Surround yourself with great attorneys or accountants who've done this before or other entrepreneurs or advisors who are highly experienced in these issues. And by the way, if your aunt is a personal injury attorney or your uncle or friend is a divorce attorney and says, hey, I'm a lawyer, I'll help you do this and get it structured and done. 
politely decline their offer and bring in that A team that has a ton of experience on these particular types of issues. Okay, as we get closer to your Series A, I wanna talk about how valuation becomes more mathematical based on some pretty standard ratios that are usually tied to one key thing. How much are you raising? In a recent Dream It Dose, we talked about how to figure out how much to raise. Often, this is a confusing topic for founders, and they're not exactly sure how to figure this out. Anyway, for early stage companies moving into seed and Series A rounds, your valuation is usually going to be a ratio based on how much you're raising. Typically, an investor at this stage wants to own about 20% of the company. So if you tell me how much you're raising, I'll tell you based on this ratio, what your valuation is. If you're trying to raise a $2 million seed round, I'm going to tell you that your valuation is going to come in at around $10 million. 20% of $10 million is $2 million. Now that's just a rough rule of thumb. Could you get a higher valuation? Sure. Let's say this is your third startup. The other two have been huge hits that drove great investor returns. And you're working in a hot space with an amazing team and great early stage traction. Could you raise $2 million at a $20 million or even $30 million valuation? Sure, it's possible. Not probable, but possible. What you're working with here is fair market value and what the market is willing to bear. What's the price a reasonable buyer and reasonable seller come to? If you go too high on your valuation and no one will meet it, you won't get a deal done. Further, you could try to get a bidding war going and get more than one investor offering a term sheet. So there is a chance the valuation gets bid up. But what we typically see at the seed and series A stages is that the 20% rule mathematically determines your valuation. Now, the final point I want to reemphasize here is that valuation is just one of the many knobs and levers in a deal. Unfortunately, it's valuation that seems to be the big issue that most founders fixate on. They almost get tunnel vision around valuation. They're almost thinking about how their TechCrunch headline is going to read. But be super careful here. Otherwise, you can get taken to the cleaners on many other terms, founder investing, employee stock option pool, liquidation preferences, and other investor rights. Keep in mind that at the end of the day, investors will typically set the cap or price, not you. You can try, but you may not be at the fair market value and you may overprice or underprice your round. Overprice and the round won't close. Underprice and you may have sold more than you needed to. The more investor interest you can generate, the better deal terms you'll get. I hope you found this valuation discussion helpful. And if you did, please like and subscribe to the Slide Bean and Dream Adventures YouTube channels. Thanks for watching.